Like a third world person on this floor. No, he's sitting there. He's dead, dead sleeping, but you know, the instant he hears the little beep. And, you know, and then here's the. That's when the thing's supposed to come in. So you think you figured it out, John? Mm hmm. What have you figured out? Why well, sometimes when you're trying to run past stairs, you run up them? And sometimes you can't go up them. Well, you can always go up them. Always, huh? I know sometimes it's hard to dismount them. But let's see. So here's the stairs right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And shaky camo vision. Let's do this. Now, what happens is you have your floor that's coming along with this. Yes. Tell me more. And then, you know, since... So what I usually do is I have... Um, go down like this and around the stairs, like so, you know, okay. for, you know, the visual effect. Yeah. That you're running around the stairs. Well, sometimes, well, usually um, it works, but sometimes, because you have this very narrow platform, you'll get it so the stair intersects right away. And um, what's happening is, is um, as you're moving this way, you very very, very briefly, you know, lose the ground. It's like you're in the air just for like one frame. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is I have code in there. So here's stairs. If you try and, and like here's ground. If you jump from the ground like this, mm -hmm. you're going to go through the stairs. Yeah. But if you try and um, jump like this, you'll land on the stairs. The, um, the, the um, code behind it is, is that if you're in the air, see when, when you go in the air, I record your jump origin. That, you know, it's used for many things like where to respawn the player if they jump into a spike pit. Because their, their jump origin is guaranteed pretty much to be safe. Mm -hmm. Except for certain situations, which I also have code. But anyways, so if it detects that you jumped and you landed below your jump starting position and yeah. you hit some stairs, it can reasonably assume that you tried to jump on the stairs. Ah. On the other hand, if you jump below the stairs and you hit the stairs at a higher position, it checks to make sure if you're holding up. If you are, it'll let you run up the stairs. If not, you go through. It's assume that you're just, you know, you're, you're jumping along the ground trying to avoid people. Yeah. So this is what's going on right here, where where um you know you try, if you jump you land on the stairs below your jump origin. It just so happens that the instant you know you go in the air, the physics does a little processing, where you know gravity affects you. Just for that split second, you you um, instead of being at position fifty five point five five, you're at fifty five point five four. You just very slightly move down a bit, and this is before it, you know, so this is the way the, the gravity works. So what would happen is you find the platform, and it determines where you are, and it resets your position, you know. So, but, that's, but this happens before that, so that split second, you're just barely below where you were. And so it says, oh, he jumped down on the stairs, and it puts you on top of the stairs. And how are you going to resolve this issue? I'll probably just um, make it so it checks against the height of the of the scene object. Okay. So you have to make so you have to fall at least the one cobalt height. To okay. Get on the stairs. That's what I might do. Let's try it. And that should fix the issue. Excellent. Another update by Sucker Free Games. We'll see how you how it works out in a moment. I had so many clients that the demands of my professional life started to get to me. 
Though I still service the few regular customers myself, the enormous cash flow and the job of keeping everything in shape require nearly all my time and attention. Yep, that's all right. I have become the most successful madam in New York, but managing the business at all hours so makes it right possible there. for me to take an active part that's in worth money. my house. Internet. I didn't even have the time or energy to enjoy my own Christmas That's party. Let's see, MVS Neo Geo. Those are its cartridges. It has Puzzle Bobble and Wind Jam. Those cartridges go for about $45 to $150 a piece, and the unit that plays them is worth about $200. Not, that does not include a CRT to, play, to actually display it on. What we're going to have to do here is replace these CRTs with uh, LCD monitors. For one reason, because these are about 150 pounds a piece and a pain in the butt, but also because we plan to put in a uh, computer down in the bottom there to play our game and have it switch between the wind jammer stuff and our machine. And look at the connectors for the TVs. Yeah, we have to get a convert a adapter to turn that into a VGA signal that we can recognize. Well, we gotta do something. So. Yeah, probably gonna put some LCDs in there. Yeah. Or something. Hopefully we can find an adapter so we can <coughs> hook the Neo Geo up to the new stuff. We don't know yet. Yeah, you can actually buy cool thing about those particular models you can actually switch out these carts because they're it's a it's for a multi cade system setup. I wanna take them out now. Are you guess you could. Yeah. That is a hefty cartridge. Bend jammers. Made in Japan, data east. Yeah, MVS, multi-video system. Yeah, they also have a six uh, cartridge carousel we could buy for it if we wanted. But this this kind of interesting story about this cabinet. SNK, Neo, VPS. Yeah. Interesting story. This thing was originally not a multi-cade for Neo Geo, but a Nintendo console way back in the day. Apparently this thing's been Frankenstein several times now. We're gonna Frankenstein it again in something even more awesome. <coughs> Slightly monstrous. You can see from the front, the marquee needs some adjusting, but it does have a light behind it. So we could possibly put a marquee up there. Um, come down here, you can see the first screen, the second screen. The patrols are nice, so we're gonna have to t um, take out the uh, shield and sandpaper it. But yeah, nice and classic. Has a coin return slot and a catch. However, not hooked up at the moment. And no bread basket. So we will have to figure out a way around that later too. But anyway, it's not that hard to find manuals and how stuff works. We're going to put vinyl siding on here with our uh, game graphics and stuff. As you can see, it's a little scuffed at the moment. Well, all in all, I have to admit, it's a pretty sexy beast. Right, John? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Hey, right, I'm recording again. We need to open up the front to be able to figure out how everything works. There's some weird power supply. That looks modern. It's, it's not ancient like that stuff. Got to figure out how all, all this crap connects. This is you can find schematics on it, but the, the thing is, this thing is, I don't even... Here's the input for the monitors. So, so the monitors connect right here. This thing connects straight from the Neo Geo. And it looks like it's been split. Somehow. There's a tiny solder job right there. It's interesting. You want, you want to document it? It looks like, it looks like it's split directly. It goes in here and... Huh. And this goes to the input of that monitor too. So, well, once why don't we once we plug it in and figure out how this thing is doing it, we could see if they're just splitting the video, uh, having the video signal double get doubled, or if it's actually two separate mm -hmm. things. Because I think it's going to happen: is the top's kind of going to be a game select, and the bottom's going to be the screen for the game. I don't know. It looks kind of looks like it's been split though. No, seriously, because I share. Okay. These two. One goes here, one goes there. It looks like it's directly split. I don't know. But it looks like it would be 
It looks like it's currently set up to just duplicate it. Okay. But I want to find something here that'll let me take this and yeah. plug it into like a modern TV. Yeah. Because then we could take these CRTs out. Because this one's right here, the bottom one has a burn in it. Yeah, on the top. And um, the top one looks pretty fine, but these things are so freaking heavy. Yeah. So maybe there is some sort of chip we can buy that will let us plug this into like a modern LCD. And so we can plug the LCDs in there for our game. Yeah. And with the top switch of a button, toggle between our game and the Neo Geo. That'd be cool. Yeah. We've already said it. <laughs> Twice but now. These things are <laughs> so freaking heavy. Yeah. Uh, but it'll be an interesting project. <clears throat> We're gonna need to get a vacuum cleaner to start vacuuming. Yeah, I know. Alright. Yeah. Well, let's uh so I so did you get a good picture of that? Actually wait, we should probably just do it as a normal picture so I can mm. grab it. You made my arm fail. Well it was kind of a failure. I was not able to find the dip switches to control the you know, free play options, so we couldn't actually play the game. And the bottom monitor it would, um, you know, the bottom half worked well, but the top half was warped. And then the top monitor was just all scrambled. It probably needs to adjust the horizontal hold. And that's right past the danger box, the box that electrocutes you to death. And nobody really wants to touch it. Oh, oh well. We're going to get rid of him anyways. So that was what we did today. Fire hazards. Yes. Jew. Jew. Oh wait, wait. Space. Sorry, I'm sorry. Jew. The Grand <laughs> Soviet Republic. Yes, William went to squim with a CCCP T-shirt, and he was not shot. That, that's actually quite amazing. I know. Who could think? Only in America. Yeah. Nerble. 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 Nerble is a kitty. Nerble. 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 The Nerble's production production. <laughs> Goodbye, Nerble. Let's do a little leg thing. It's cute.